focusing in on more free motion skills and drills today, but today is all about target practice, but to make it easy, we're doing it on a pre-printed panel. Let's get started. We have a bunch of great videos listed in one of our playlists for you all about the different free motion skills and drills we've been doing. I love to teach this stuff, but I've been doing a lot of it on solid fabrics and sometimes that's just kind of hard. It's kind of overwhelming to be looking at a blank canvas and say, where do I start? Now, what I want to do today is I want to talk about some of these cool pre-printed panels. One, because they're great to machine quilt on, and two, because they make great gifts when you're all done. This is not, um, I want to, I shouldn't say waste of time in the practice, but you can really use these when you're finished. But when I go out and pick a panel to stitch on, I'm looking for what is it I want to learn next. And right now, I want to get better at straight line machine quilting, but in free motion mode. So I can go into ruler work, I can go into longer straight line work, right? So I've chosen this panel today, and if you look close, you can see there's a lot of straight line work. And the straight line work, I want to still start in the middle of an area, and I had to, one, learn how do I get around the sections and stay, as I said earlier, target practice right on these spaces as I go. And you can see right here I'm not perfect. You can probably see right here I'm not perfect. So what I'm first doing is learning to just stitch straight lines by having something to follow. But as a good quilter would, I start in the middle and I move my way out. Then later on, I am still dealing with straight lines, but I'm doing some more intricate curves as well. And what I was practicing here was really starts and stops because I don't want to carry a thread from the outside of the flower to the inside of the flower. So I need to be better at my starts and stops as well. So pick yourself a panel that you love, that you want to work on. And if you really want to make it just your practice panel, remember you can do multiple passes just by changing your thread colors so that you can see your newer work. So work from your darker threads to your lighter threads so you can always see your newest work and see how much you are improving because I know you are with each stitch. All you need to do is take the panel that you have, and I took mine and cut it in half so I'd have two parts. I've put a regular backing on it. I've put the batting that I use very often, so I'm testing my samples I have at home. And then I've gone ahead and I've safety pin basted it, and I'm safety pin basting around where I will not be stitching at first. So even though this looks like the center, and I do want to start on this square, because in this square I have a curved line that I'll be sewing, I want to sew my curves first when possible. Okay, so I'm going to sew the curve of this, and I'm going to sew the curve of the flower, and then I'm going to come back with this straight line. So that's why there are no safety pins in this area. As we get ready to get at our sewing machine, I always have my sew slip mat down. That's a Teflon coating for my machine, and it makes it very, very nice so that I have a, a slippery surface underneath. And you see I'm wearing my machine gears gloves. Now, what I'm going to do with my presser foot up, I'm going to take one single hand cranked stitch right where I want to start, and I'm going to bring that thread tail up from the bobbin as well. And I'm going to smooth this out. Now press your foot down so I have tension on my thread. I'm going to take a couple stitches to lock in, and I'm actually going to go right around that little spiral that we see in there, and then I'm going to start out along the sign, or the banner, whatever we want to call this. And I'm thinking about staying on the line, but I'm also thinking about, well, let's first take a second, and I'm gonna rotate this so you can really see what I'm gonna talk about. I wanna cut these threads out of the way, so you don't have to look at them, nor do I. Now, as I come around, there's this line right here that if I keep stitching down this line, I am going to have to come back later and just fill that in. So watch what I do. As I come along close, I'm here, then I'm gonna just quickly fill in that line. It's an easy line, and I'm gonna do my darndest to come right back up that same line, fill it in, and now I can continue on. And you probably noticed I rotated the quilt as well, but I didn't rotate it while the needle was moving. So with free motion work, we never wanna rotate the quilt while the needle's moving, because you'll see a big stitch. And as I get close to this safety pin, I also wanna get in here and remove it. The safety pin was there to hold all the layers of the backing and the batting and the quilt top together, but I have now stitched enough that I can get it out of the way. So we're gonna follow through here. I'll catch the rest of the leaf later when I do the stem below. 
And so other things we should talk about. What about my hand position? I can see my right hand is starting to come a little far away and you can actually see some of the pucker that's happening around the quilt. So we also wanna practice our really good body mechanics. So this is all about learning how to machine quilt while tracing something instead of doing something that would basically be um, a blank canvas where you're out there just floating along. Here, I'm gonna come back up. I'm gonna secure as much of this as I can. And I was talking too much. I have now painted myself in a corner. Let's see how we get out. I'm just gonna try to ride those threads right back out. Okay, I did it, no too, not too big of a deal. So now as I come around the outside of that curve, instead of doubling back again, I'm gonna follow a new line. I really don't ever want to lay down more than two layers of stitching because the more thread you put on top of itself, it'll really show up. And now I'm just following that line. I'm actually kind of looking just right behind my foot. It's obviously hard to sew backwards like this, but with enough practice, you'll get good. But you know, if you felt uncomfortable with it, you would stop here. And like I said, you're just gonna go ahead and rotate the project like this. And then you can see where you're heading so much more easily and you can head down there that way. So now we're talking about starts and stops. I'm coming right back to a spot where I basically started from. So I'm gonna take a few stitches in place. I'm gonna lock it down. And then what I wanna do is I wanna rotate by hand up and then I'm gonna move and tug on my thread here. And if I cut right at the knot, a lot of times I have also now cut my bobbin thread. It worked, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Now you saw me going around the scroll, but while you were on coffee break, I needed to go ahead and go around all of my other objects with inside of this box, because as I said, I want to focus on my straight lines. So we work from the center outward when we're quilting. I'm going to do this first inner straight line next so I can pull the safety pin. I have basically basted the quilt again by my stitching here and over here. So I'm getting my safety pins out of my way. And then the other thing I want to really think about is I want to think about good places to start and stop. And I don't mean the stitch, but I mean, well, I do mean the stitch, but I mean the motion of the machine itself. So real quick, let's go ahead and bring that thread tail up again. So I've got my presser foot up. I'm just kind of pulling on my top thread to bring the bobbin through. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and secure those stitches again. But what I was trying to say is, is this is a straight line and I really don't wanna stop within that straight line. So I'm getting my hands nice here and I'm gonna come all the way down to this bottom corner so that that way, that's my stopping point. So I've got my hands in a position where I can go to there, get my machine up, a couple stitches. And I'm just looking in front of the needle just slightly. And then if I feel like I need to, I can stop here and this is where I could rotate the quilt. Now this is a really long straight line. So I'm gonna try to go to halfway through. And as I go halfway through, I'm gonna stop about where my thumb's at. And what we wanna do now is I'm gonna relax and remove my hands and I don't wanna pull or let too much twist because the fiber could actually cause the needle to fall off the target. There we go, if you're pulling too much. So I just want to get a really good restart up stitch. Now I can go all the way down to the bottom corner. I'll turn the music up and finish out this perimeter and I've got a couple things I want to show you right at the end. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back to the final corner. And just like before, what I want to do is I want to bring my thread to the top and I want to kind of give a pull and a tug and hook for my scissors and snip right at that knot. And again, I have freed myself from the bobbin thread as well. And you can see here that I don't have any trailing jump stitches, but I was also using my thread cutter right in here because it was convenient. And what that'll do for you is it'll leave these little whiskers. So sometimes you need to come back in here and trim that out. Now, you wanna take a couple of anchoring stitches before you use your thread cutter. So either way, it's tied in. And this is all about practice. Excuse me, this is all about practice. And so what I want you to really do is try both using thread cutter and using the way where we bring our threads to the top and our scissors and figure out what it is you like the best for your different samples. 
And I also mentioned early on, you can use these panels over and over again, not only by using a new color thread and a new color bobbin. So a great way to do that is use something like your little bobbin buddy to keep your bobbin and your threads close together so that you're always using the matching thread. And that really helps you get your tensions dialed in and stuff. Um, doesn't have to be the same weight, but I like the same colors, right? So you can use that and go around some of those same straight lines. And if you work to the lighter color threads, you'll still be able to see what you've done. And not only that, but you also will have some other space and I'm getting another idea. I think I want to talk next about maybe some micro stippling. So areas in this background space, you can also go in and practice some of your other type of stitching and free motion motifs while I'm preparing that micro stitching video for you right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.